Hi, this is Steve Fabian. We're going to continue our series. Today we'll look at uh, how to use our Entity Framework WCF Data Service style data access layer and our knockout um, data binding to add new records to our tables. And again, the make, makes this uh, a little more complicated is we've got multiple tables uh, with uh, associations between the tables. So we'll show how you can add uh, that as well as use knockout data binding to build a, a uh, an input screen with um, drop down lists mm -hmm. that are bound to the those associated tables. So let's take us. I guess we'll start with the view. No, we'll start with the view model. So we'll start with the view model. We're going to have um, uh, some drop downs on our form. In fact, let me show you real quickly what the form is going to look like, and then we'll show you how you build that. Okay, so here's our form. We've got a an input field for the task, and we've got some drop-down lists. So you can select the category, the the person uh, that you're going to assign the task to, and then the status that you want to uh, set for that task when you add it. And then we've got a buttons for submit and cancel. So let's take a look behind the scenes, and we'll start with the um, with the view model. So we're going to have some observable arrays that we're going to populate um, one for the status drop down, one for the category drop down, one for the people drop down and then for each of those we're going to have a, another property on our view model which is also a knockout observable uh, for the selected item on each of those drop downs. Then we have our actual model properties. Again if we go back and, and just take a look at our data model again uh, the to-do list item is our main table uh, and that's the, the record we're going to add. So we've got the ID, the module ID, the created by date, user, and task. The rest of these are um, the uh, IDs for the foreign key relationships with the associated other associated tables. So now we're going to create uh, model properties for our ID, module, date, created, date, created by user, and task, and each of those will be knockout uh, observables. So we can do two-way data binding. And then for each of our drop downs, we're going to have a function to go and get the data and, and populate those drop down lists. So we've got a function for load status, we have a function for load categories, and we have a function for load people. Um, they're all basically the same. We're going to do an OData read to our service URL and then slash to our entity collection. So to load uh, the status items, we're going to make a call to the slash to do list status. And again, if we take a look at our data service, bring that up in a browser. Again we have our collections so for to-do list status oops, okay, we get back all of our status records uh, and in a collection. So we do that and then we're going to first clear out our status. Remember status is an observable array so we're going to clear out all any existing records so that if we end up calling this on, on a page refresh or, or calling it multiple times we don't end up with duplicate records. So we remove all the items from the array we then iterate through the data.results uh, data comes back from our service call and we're going to use knockout mapping to create dynamic models from each item and push it into that array. So at the end of this read we now have a status as a, an observable array which contains all of the status records. We do the same thing for categories and the same thing for users. Now we have a function called add task. So if we go back again and take a look at our form um, at some point they're going to fill out this form and hit submit. And when it hits submit we want to execute this function add task. So this function is going to create some post data. So we're going to end up doing a post and uh, we're going to pass in our properties. So uh, we're going to pass in a property called ID and we're going to set the value to the view model ID. So that's going to take its value from the model property which is a knockout observable. Same thing with module ID. Now create a date. We don't have a property up here for created date. Actually we do have a created date property but um, in the add when we go to post it we're just going to put the new date in which will be today's date. So uh, it'll be the date and time that we make this call to the uh, when this post data gets created. And then the task we're going to get the task from the task property. Now here's the here's the interesting part. The rest of the properties on our on our model. So we're looking here at status ID, category ID, and user user ID. These are the key values, foreign key values for the associations with the other tables. And when I pass this post data uh, and say you know write this data to the to do list item table, I want to also pass it the uh, URI uh, that references the category status and user records that were selected. 
Okay, so you can see here we have the view model selected category, and so the the effect is we're we're passing a URI to that resource, which is in this case, this first case, the collection of the category records, and in parentheses we're going to pass the uh, primary key ID. Um, so if we go back and take a look at our um, data service. and I look at let's say status again okay if I wanted to get the second status which in this case was uh, on hold it has an I can see it has an ID of 2 well again using the URI rest um, API I pass 2 in uh, in parentheses so this says to the data service I'm interested in the resource which is a member of the to-do list status collection that has a primary key of 2 and if I do that you'll see I just get this one record back so that's the approach we take for category if when I was doing my data entry here I selected uh, for status on hold which is has the ID of 2 then um, it, that would be bound to the selected status property and I'll show you how we do the data binding later but when the user selected on hold the selected status would be 2 which is the ID associated with that particular status and now when we send this post data to the service to say add this record for the status we're going to pass a URI, we're going to pass the URI to that status collection, and in parentheses, we're going to pass that selected status, which would be 2. And that just is the uh, what the method that the WCF data service uses to create that foreign key relationship. So when it adds the record to the to-do list item table, it'll put a 2 in that status ID column, creating that relationship between the records. So we do that, we take that approach for category, status, and user. We're just going to pass the URI to the collection, and then the selected ID in parentheses to identify the specific record within that collection that we want to create that association with. So that creates our post data. Then we create a request object. We pa uh, one of the properties of the request object is the request URI. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a post, an HTTP post, to this resource collection. So our service URL slash to-do list items. When you do a post to a, to a collection, then that's how you add data. And you do a get, that's how you retrieve the data. And when we do a uh, delete, the method would be delete, and later on I'll show you when we do an edit, it'll either be a put or a merge. And I'll, when we do the edit, I'll explain the difference between put and merge. So we create our request object with our uh, resource URI, the method that we want to do, an HTTP post in this case, and then we pass that data, that post data object. And here's all the data we want to post to that collection. Okay? And then we use OData to make a request. So you notice the difference when we're doing a read, OData read will actually generate a get, HTTP get to read data. When we do an OData.request it's going to then use the request, you pass it the request object which identifies the URI and the method that you want to use and all the data that you want to post. And then what we get back is uh, return data which would give us an indication of a success or failure. Um, in this case, I'm not really uh, handling the uh, return data here. What I'm going to do is, is once the data has been posted uh, and added to the table, I'm going to now use, again, one of the um, global variables, vari JavaScript variables that this particular template module base class creates called return URL which is the URL of the the main view of my module so once I've added that data I'm just gonna uh, force the page to go back to the the list view so you should see the new data there okay and um, um, so then that's the definition of my view model so I've got my drop downs my model properties my functions to load the drop down lists my function to add uh, data from the form from the uh, module properties to that collection and so then once I've done that I'm going to apply my bindings and then I'm going to call load status load categories and load people to populate those drop down lists